Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Skeptic Saint, or should I say, Skeptic Scientist, because I don't want to imply that I believe in anything religious. I don't need a sky daddy to explain to me how the world works, okay? Now let's go into something that's so important to talk about. While I was listening to a TED Talk, I was wondering, why would anyone believe in any kind of conspiracy? If you believe in the following conspiracies, you are crazy and nutty, and you should probably go back to your mom's basement and stay there. If you believe the following things, you are an insane person, and you shouldn't honestly be allowed on the internet or anywhere else. If I see you on my university, I'm going to challenge you to a debate in front of all of my professor friends, and using facts and logic, I'm just going to ruin your whole life. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start with an easy one, Bigfoot and the Yeti. There is not a more implausible, insane, stupid creature for any basement-dwelling idiot to believe in than Bigfoot. I mean, look at it. It's completely biologically impossible that something like this would ever exist. If you believe in Bigfoot, you probably also believe in unicorns and dragons, too. Only an idiot would believe in Bigfoot. Idiots like Jane Goodall, who has done basically nothing in her life except become the world leader in primate research. Okay, maybe that's a bad example. Another idiot would be like Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum, PhD, who's the head of anthropology at a major university and has 300 footprint casts, all of which share very common characteristics and were collected all around the continent over many decades. Okay, he probably just he probably just made all of them. Anyway, there's David Attenborough, another idiot who believes in Bigfoot, or at minimum says that there's a lot to the Bigfoot and Yeti mystery. And then there's Eric Shipman, another total loser who did nothing his whole life except climb Kilimanjaro and be a core member of the vast majority of the original Everest expeditions. Okay, uh, But then there's, of course, the always untrustworthy, the always moronic Army Corps of Engineers, who believed in Bigfoot enough to put it in the Washington Environmental Atlas, which was a guide for the Army Corps engineers for the state of Washington. They treated it like a very real creature. Very interesting. Well, then there's the other idiots, the uh, total uneducated losers over at ZooBank, the largest international directory for animal species, which officially recognizes the Sasquatch as Homo sapien cognatus and believes there is sufficient evidence to put this animal in their archive. Well, clearly, uh, they're all idiots. So with Bigfoot thoroughly debunked, let's move on. Let's move on to something else. Okay, Bigfoot's been clearly destroyed here. Let's move on to UFOs, okay? If you think little green men are coming to Earth and shaking hands with the president and eating with the Clintons and burning effigies with the Bushes, you are emphatically, embarrassingly insane. Only complete, utter unqualified, unequipped, obese, incompetent morons would ever believe UFOs are real and interact with humans. Idiots like the former space security chief of Israel who says aliens exist and the president knows about it. Well, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> what does he know? Anyway, then there's Michio Kaku, who's world famous physicist and science educator who says, quote, we have achieved a gold standard in evidence for confirming these objects are real. Well, what, you know, what does he know? Commander Fravor, who actually has never received a PhD from a major university, but I guess he is smart enough to fly carrier based fighter jets, which require the top 1% of skill. And he does have perfect eyesight, so I guess you could say if he saw something, he would know what he's talking about. But again, what does he know? And then there's, of course, the Department of Defense and the Navy, who not only have confirmed that they think these things are real, but they don't know what they are or how to stop them, at least publicly. Okay, well, other than, you know... <laughs> Okay, I think I think UFOs have been thoroughly debunked. Okay, if you if you're out in the woods and you see a, a UFO, a flying saucer, it's probably just an owl. You know, it's probably just a barn owl. You know. Anyway, let's address one more thing that is so dumb that if you actively participate in this activity, you should probably be barred from owning a gun, and that is preparing for the end of the world. <laughs> Someone plays too much Fallout. If you think the world would ever ever end. And if you think preparing with food storage, water, and guns is a smart idea, well, you could take your redneck, hick, knuckleheaded brain and get back to your trailer park. Even if something bad did happen, the state has so many resources to help us. Besides, what's the worst that could happen? 
other than, say, an asteroidal impact, which, you know, a massive one hit us in 1910, and an extinction-level asteroid hit 12,500 years ago. At least there's mounting evidence for that, and we're actually overdue for a planet-killer asteroid. Okay, well, other than that, then there's fungus evolving to hijack humans, which is becoming more likely thanks to global warming, which is becoming more likely, according to scientists. There's the ever-present danger of nuclear war, which, with the conflict in Ukraine, becomes more and more likely every passing day, with Vladimir Putin threatening to use tactical nukes in Ukraine, which NATO would probably respond in kind with strategic nuclear weapons, and then it would, uh, you know, it would all go uphill from there, though, because nuclear war would actually be pretty good for the planet. And then there's, of course, the collapse of the supply chain thanks to explosions at food manufacturing facilities and train derailments and then just lighting their toxic contents on fire. Very big brain move over there in Palestine. It's probably good for the environment, though, so no worries. Then there's also the Yellowstone supervolcano eruption, which I guess even though it would technically, geographically, politically, and logistically take the United States off the map... At least there's a 10-year-long nuclear winter where nothing can grow. So that's the bright side of Yellowstone going off. And by the way, we're well overdue for this eruption. And then there is, of course, uh, some kind of EMP attack or polarity shifts, which in both cases would cause electronics to go completely offline, which basically means anyone dependent on the power grid to live would die and, of course, anything you have that's electronic would go away. So you're basically back in the Stone Age. By the way, a magnetic pull shift, yeah, we're overdue for one of those as well. So, well, other than all of that, guys, I mean, honestly, we just don't have anything to worry about. So I'm glad we could debunk those crazy, crazy right-wing extremists. Like, <laughs> what do they know? They don't have any doctorates. They don't have any PhDs. Who cares what they have to say? Some of them even say that our government would attack its own citizens. Isn't it? Wait, what the? Say